Okay, what is going on everyone? No, let me fix my mic here. Okay, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is your host DKK here and uh, we're doing a LLL, Levi Little League, uh, week 7 recap. So we had a bye week, my team, the Badoo Brawlers. We had a bye week last week and we're now in week 7 against the... I think Gobos Unite is the name of the team. Maybe United Gobos. Not exactly sure. But yeah, so a little bit of a story with this with this week. A little bit of a preface before we actually jump into the actual content here of the, the team structure and all those things. So we were down, I believe, two and three over the course of five weeks. And basically a, t a couple things needed to happen uh, for us to get into playoffs. Because there's seven teams, only the top four go to playoffs. And we were like ranked fifth. Uh, so basically what needed to happen is we needed to win this game. We needed to win this week. And we needed to win this week by a differential of four to one at the minimum. And what we needed on top of that was another team to lose. And if that team lost, then uh, basically we would they, we, both of us would be at three and three for an overall record, but our differential would be plus one, their differential would be zero. So we would actually go to playoffs. We'd actually sneak in barely. So what actually happens is actually very crazy. Um, you're gonna see over the course of this, uh, basically what happens is that against our opponents, um, they gave us three activity wins, so we already won the week. But basically, either me or Akonet, who were playing, had to have had to win our game in order to have the positive differential that would allow us to actually go to the playoffs. And so we're going to check that out. We're going to see if we actually were able to make it. And uh, what actually had happened on the other end is that the other team had to lose. So shout out to their opponents, <laughs> one of them being Joltage, who was actually on my little cup World Cup team. He won the fifth game because it was two and two, and he won three and two, or he won the game, made it three and two. The other team lost. They're down to three and three as an overall record. We're at three and three, so we had a chance. And all we had to do was win one of these two games. So that's kind of the preface for this. If we win one of these two games, we go to the playoffs. Um, I get a play i think another game or at least one more game of lcuu which is gonna be awesome and you guys get one more video of lll coverage so that'd be really great um so it goes well for everyone on all ends so let's jump right into it so two minutes in so a little bit of a long introduction but you know here we are if you guys weren't aware when it comes to little cup uu uh it follows the same usage kind of shifts that happen and because january 1st ro rolled around we saw all those different shifts um the same things affected uu lc uu so a couple of things actually dropped down to lc uu which is probably one thing you notice right here which is our friend spritzy so spritzy dropped archon actually dropped as well they just didn't get enough usage in lc ou and they dropped down and interestingly enough Krogunk actually moved up from lc uu to lc ou so Krogunk's out of the picture. So for me, when I was building my team for this week, and I wanted, to, you know, I wanted to build something cool. I wanted to build something. Like I wanted to use the new toys. So of course I was gonna like, I'm gonna build around Spritzy. Um, I was trying to think, what else is good in the meta game? What else is really great? And basically, the lack of a dry skin, uh, Krogunk means water types. I think got really bad, like significantly better. Um, so because of that, um, I was like, okay, Corefish seems really great. Corefish now, um, you know, Krogunk was immune to water and, you know, was resisting of knockoff. So now Corefish looks really good. You know, knockoff plus Crab Hammer at plus one or Aqua Jet can really clean through teams. The other thing that's really good is that the biggest stop to Corefish is uh, Pancham. Or sorry, biggest, excuse me, biggest stop to Corefish now is Lily, which Pancham handles very easily. Um, and what's even better is that Pancham doesn't need to run Gunk Shot anymore. Sorry, doesn't need to run Zen Headbutt anymore. He can actually opt to hit, go for Gunk Shot to help with the Cottony matchup. And of course, Spritzy is what it's really mainly for. So that's kind of the team structure I have here. I have Pancham with Gunk Shot instead of Zen Headbutt. I've been using Zen Headbutt for the entire tournament. I use Gunk Shot this time around. I'm using Corefish with DD, Aqua Jet, Water, or Crab Hammer, and the other move. And... I'm um, using Spritzy with Trick Room, uh, Psychic, Moonblast, and I think Nasty Plot. Uh, the rest of the team, I just kind of filled in uh, based off of what I was kind of expecting to see. Stunky, I just kind of fit in as a good fairy check because I was expecting potentially a, uh, a, a, a Spritzy from my opponent. Meowth is there as just like a strong physical attacker to hit like 19 speaks. I don't have a Scarf on this team, so I wanted something fast. And of course, I'm going to be able to run Water Pulse on this thing to help snipe Archons if I did run into one of those. And then lastly, we have a Pokemon that I've been wanting to use for many weeks now, which is Baltoy, but I just haven't found the opportunity for it. And finally, I was like, okay, Baltoy can work here it can be a spinner it can be a rocker and most importantly it is a immune to ground which means dig little lola with a defensive spread on my ball toy can be handled relatively well with my with this pokemon so i thought it'd be really cool to kind of bring this it's a kind of an unconventional looking team i don't wouldn't recommend really using it i don't think it's that solid um 
altogether, but it is fun and it was really cool um, to be able to use it this time around. Actually, build, you know, building my team is always fun. So that's my team in a nutshell. And you know, looking at the opponent's team, the biggest thing that I saw at preview was the ability of Corfish to just destroy this team, right? Basically, Gola, if it's Scarf, which I'm expecting, is going to be knocked out at Aqua Jet 100% of the time. Um, doesn't even need rocks. Um, Magby needs can be not obviously be knocked out by Aqua Jet. I do have to be a little careful. My Corefish, because it has Mach Punch, it could knock out my Mag. It could knock out my Corefish if my if um, if my Corefish gets too low because Mach Punch would outspeed my Aqua Jet. Um, but that still looks good. Meowth obviously needs to be like at 60% or something, pretty like 70, like pretty low basically um, before I kill it. Um, Kabuto, which I'm expecting to be like a rocker. Um, obviously isn't really a big threat i can be able, definitely be able to get that weakened and then depending on the stunky set i could also kill this at like 60 percent with aqua jet or 50 or something along those lines the only thing that's really out of the picture or really thing that's really blocking my core fish from winning is basically this cottony which i do have gunk shot for and i also do have a stunky which handles it really well so i'm basically looking for one of these two to remove the grass type and then from there my cotton my my core fish looks excellent 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 right so um, in terms of threats for my opponent's team, Meowth is kind of hard for me to switch into, and the Stunky is honestly really difficult for me to switch into, because it's dual stabs just, like, really wreck my team, um, especially because, like, my team is kind of frail besides uh, my own Stunky, which can block it, so that, I think, is a pretty good look at this from matchup. Uh, I'm going to lead off with Pancham. Pancham, basically what I was thinking, has a really good matchup against, you know, if he leads Cottony, I can gunk shot that, which is great. Uh, if he leads Meowth or Ka uh, Kabuto, which I'm more expecting, I can handle both of those and get a nice drain punch off or, or a knockoff off. So that's kind of what I'm deciding to go for in this game. So we're going to see the Kabuto lead. I'm expecting this thing to probably just be rocks. I'm going to knock turn one because I was expecting maybe a focus sash or something if he leads off with it like this. So I didn't want to just drain punch. Um, I'd rather just like get this thing uh, a little bit weakened. At worst case, it's you know it's starting to be put into range of Aqua Jet. As we do see the Violet come out, so I think that was a little weird. I could have just drain punched and probably killed this thing, or at least got it close. Um, but you know it works out. As I'm just gonna drain punch now. I don't think this thing can really do too much to me, and anything it does, I'm just gonna be able to kill, you know, heal back up. So I'm just gonna go for Drain Punch. No reason for me to really predict on this turn. Um, I don't think Golette, which I'm expecting to be Scarf, is gonna come out this turn because like bringing in a Scarfer really early in the game just puts you in a tough position because if it's Scarf, then and they make a nice switch. If your opponent, like, if I, you know, if I made a nice switch and like predicted whatever it's gonna go for, then you lose a ton of momentum. So. I didn't expect that. I can just drain punch here. And at this point, I was like, you know what? I have my Violet intact. I can take any one hit, Dazzling Gleam or whatever. And getting rid of this Cottony works really well in my favor, you know, in terms of game plan. And more likely than not, my opponent is going to knock, expecting me to, like, go into Stunky or something. He's not going to Dazzling Gleam into that. So I knew that was going to come. Even if he went for Dazzling Gleam, I know I could take it. And that trade is way, like, super, super worth it for me because I'm trying to win this game with my Core Fish. So he does go for the knock. My opponent does go for the knock as I'm able to connect with Gunk Shot. Very fortunate for that and getting rid of cottony is really huge for me right getting rid of this thing means i'm in a really good spot right off the bat as meowth's gonna come in it's gonna take a lot of damage from fake out but i know that either as we're gonna see life orb here in terms of my oh my music stopped playing excuse me guys sorry about that put that back on for you i didn't realize for so long i was like what's going on um basically here I take the fake out, no problem, right? And I know that, okay, faint I can take easily and drain punch everything back. I also know that if my opponent decides to go for double edge, which is definitely a possibility, it would knock me out, sure, but he would take recoil damage and he would also take life orb damage. And at that point, you're pretty much in range of uh, my Aqua Jet, which is what I want in the long run. So I'm fine with taking this risk, as I also know there's a good chance my opponent might just U-turn expecting the switch. So I'm kind of reading the situation, right? And it's not like I'm just making these predictions. I'm just evaluating my Pancham as not super valuable at this point, and more so the fact that um, I'd rather get the damage out on these things because it works towards my game plan. So my opponent just goes for U-turn and is going to sack the, uh, the Kabuto, which is a good play. I'm going to drain punch and get a bunch of health back, which is great. Like, this is a really good spot for me to be in as now my opponent's going to go into Magby. I know at this point, you know, Magby is threatening. I do have some stops to it, but not too many. Like I'm either banking on, you know, Aqua Jet 
killing this thing. I am banking on Meowth, you know, fake out into faint, maybe killing this thing, which it should probably. Um, but other than that, I don't have too many great switch ins, so I have to kind of get this turn right. I know at this point my opponent just wants this Pancham killed. I have dodged death like a couple of times, you know, knock and the U turn. So I know at this point he's just going to psychic. He can't let this Pancham get more value than it already has done. So now I'm going to finally make the switch into Stunky freely, right? I know Psychic's going to come out here. And at this point, I'm kind of in a predicament because. You know, I'm expecting the Stunky to come out, so I don't know exactly what to do, but I because I could flamethrower into the Stunky to get as much damage as possible. My set is uh, Nasty Plot, Sludge Bomb, Flamethrower, Sucker Punch, I believe. So I have Sucker Punch as just like a out against like this faster attacker, it's mainly Diglett Alola, which I'm scared of on this type of team. So I do have Sucker Punch as an out. Um, I was thinking about flamethrowering this turn just because I think it would, I thought it would bring me a ton of utility in terms of like, you know, just getting the Stunky worn down, because that's the next part of my game plan. You know, now that I know this Meowth is going to be worn down by Life Orb, I know that I kill Golette with Aqua Jet, I know I kill Magby with Aqua Jet. The only thing that really needs to go down is this Stunky. This Stunky needs to be a little bit weaker, and then I'm in a great spot. I pretty much win the game. So, I was really debating flamethrowing, but at the end of the day, I decided, you know what, if my opponent goes into Stunky, I can just flamethrower the next turn, because, um, Sludge Bomb into that thing is completely fine, as, you know, Magby, you know, Sludge Bomb into that thing means it takes a little bit of chip and then I can Flamethrower, it's not like he can do too much to me in return, so I'm fine with just going for the Sludge Bomb play, especially if my opponent decides to stay in and attack my Stunky, I can get really good trade damage off, um, so that's exactly what happens, the Fire Blast comes out, I am in Violet, so I do take that hit, my opponent might have been expecting me to be Berry Juice or something, or potentially even Life Orb, so it makes sense why he went for that. But I knew I can take any one hit, I can sludge bomb away, and my, I know at this point my opponent is not expecting Sucker Punch, so I can just Sucker Punch and get the kill. Unfortunately, it does get the Flame Body, as that means my next Sucker Punch against the Stunky. At this point, I'm just going to go for Sucker, because I want some chip on this thing, and if I lose the tie, I get literally nothing. So I'd rather just like get the guaranteed 5%, you know, basically 1 HP, um, and die. So, cool. Maybe I could have saved Stunky, um, like for aftermath damage on like Meowth that could have been like a cool play because like getting that would have put this thing in for sure in range of Aqua Jet so potentially there was like a, a play I could have made there but that would have required me like bringing something in which would have been kind of difficult so I think this is like a fine play altogether as here I do make a bit of a misplay. Um, I'm going to go into Meowth here, and I didn't really think through my plays. At this point, I was like so far ahead, I was like, oh, I can win this game no matter what. But then I realized when I brought in Meowth, like in an attempt to get damage off on the Stunky, I'm in a weird spot because now Golet can come in on Fake Out. He can come in on uh, pretty much anything. One second, we pause here. Any of the normal type moves and like I can lose a lot of momentum. So in retrospect, what I should have done is my Pancham is at like 76%. This thing is not Life Orb as we've seen. All like what I can really do is take any one hit and knock off. If my opponent decides to switch into Golet, it dies. If he goes into Meowth, I'm pretty sure it dies. Or at at the you know in the best case, it just loses a Life Orb and loses so much damage output that I win on the spot basically. And for me, in the best case scenario, I knock off this uh, Stunky's of Violite, meaning that um, my hits from my, you know, it does take damage, and now it's uh, my Corfish's Aqua Jet does significantly more damage to it. So, in retrospect, this is a pretty kind of sloppy play just going into Meowth. I wasn't thinking through things. I just felt that I was so far ahead, there's no way I could lose, um, which was not the case, right? Because now I'm like in a predicament. I'm just going to go for U turn, and I was expecting to switch, I don't get it right, and now I have to sack something. So now things are looking a little dicey. I just had to sack Pancham here. And as you can see, I take Sludge Bomb completely fine. I would have been able to take any one hit. And now I have to sack the Pancham and go back into my Meowth. And I get this next play wrong as well. So my opponent plays the next couple of turns really nicely, and I make a, some pretty awful plays, if I'm being honest with you. And uh, now the game's a little bit closer than I wanted to. The Stunky is at 70%. It's still out of range of my Aqua Jet. Um, I'm in a tough position. So Golet comes in. I know for sure my opponent's never going to go for Poulter. Poulter is just like an <laughs> insanely risky play. And even if he does go for Poulter, I can just go into my Meowth and literally just fire off attacks until it switches out, right? I can just go for Water Pulse or whatever and get a bunch of damage off. So I know he's never going to go for that. He's not gonna go for EQ either because I have a Levitator. I'm expecting probably Dynamic Punch. And I know that Ball Toy can take that. So I'm gonna go into Ball Toy here. Um, I think another play I could have gone for is maybe Spritz here. If I go on Spritzy on this, uh, I can Trick Room up 
And from there, I can trick room up and actually like just sack my spritzy and then just go into my core fish and then crab hammer and pretty much win game, right? So I think I could have done, just done that as like a quicker win path because what we're going to see here is I get confused and I'm going to rock it. I'm going to rapid spin on the switch because I know the spin switch is coming and I want to speed up my ball toy because once my ball toy is sped up, I actually, you know, I'm in a really good spot. So, and of course, getting rid of the rocks means I can like potentially take, you know, fake out into faint better with my core fish if it really comes down to it. So I do get out of confusion which I was really fortunate for um, and then now I outspeed I'm actually gonna snap out of confusion and then earth power and knock out the stunky and at this point the game's pretty much over my opponent's gonna go into Meowth Meowth's gonna fake out take a good chunk from that and now I can very comfortably just uh, go for earth power knock that thing out he's gonna u-turn but it's pretty much game as a uh, goal that's gonna come in I'm just gonna be able to aqua jet that thing and kill it so things are looking pretty good for me I'm gonna win the game as my opponent's gonna forfeit in the next turn but I'm pretty happy with uh, how that went down. Again, I think a better, maybe more safe win path was a couple turns back, basically right here. Uh, instead of having to bank on confusion ending, I could have just gone into spritz, right? If I go into spritz, take the deep punch. I'm still confused. I'm going to be confused no matter what, but at least I can trick room up. I get, uh, basically I get like, I get one chance to do it essentially um and then we're kind of in a similar position i guess all together so it kind of works out either way but basically if i trick room up there i can win on the spot because at that point all i have to do is go into my core fish and then die to the stunky which is going to kill me click crab hammer win game basically so it works out either way i'm able to get the win and that means we do go to the playoffs which is awesome i'm really excited about that love playing you know lcuu so i'm just happy to be able to play more of it in general and uh yeah, that's uh, that's that for for my game. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. And of course, we still have one more game, which is going to be a Conant's game. So I'm going to pause really quickly and load that one up. Okay, and here we are with a Conant's game. So at this point, we already have the differential, but it would be nice to, of course, we want our teammate to win. Um, but I have a Conant against uh, Sergio, and Sergio is actually one of my friends as well. We were. Well, he was on the PU World Cup team and I was, uh, you know, helping out, but, you know, got to know each other a little bit. He's a really cool guy and, uh, you know, cool to see him play in LCRU because I think he builds like pretty much all of his own teams. So uh, definitely going to be a great matchup here. Looking forward to it. We have a Conant loading up with a interesting team altogether. I think the biggest things to look for here are uh, Zigzagoon, which might be, you know, Belly Drum, Extreme Speed or whatever. And then Azuril, which is probably, again, Belly Drum. Uh, huge power aqua jet something like along those lines the rest of the team is pretty standard probably like scarf or something life or or scarf life or bunnelby wish protect um lick a tongue uh Baneary, just kind of like the bunny the bunny duo can't go wrong with that and of course stuffle um sergio side pretty interesting team as well uh uh, Dino or Dano, don't know the pronunciation exactly, is a Pokemon that's been kind of been more used recently to help with uh, Sinisty, but since Sinisty has been banned, um, Dino I think kind of doesn't have as much value anymore, but it's still a pretty strong mod. It has Hustle, it also has Nasty Plot, um, all those things, and just nice typing, Dark Dragon, Solid. Gibble, again, could be special, could be physical, could be rocks, could be anything. Uh, Bagon, very scary Pokemon. Again, we've seen its power. It does have, you know, unfortunately have accuracy issues because the moves are all inaccurate, but um, at plus one, plus one, it's really it's really dangerous. Um, Meowth, I think, is, you know, pretty standard, just kind of like you turn, fake out kind of deal. Um, the Clauncher, don't see a ton of this. I mean, I think I have, but like expecting just kind of a special attacker. And of course, the Anorith is like Rocker, Rapid Spinner, all sorts of things. So I would say, in terms of biggest threats um, from both sides, uh, Bagon definitely looks really threatening considering a Conant's team isn't the most like physically defensive uh, you know plus one Bagon can like kind of go crazy uh, especially when paired with like Meowth you know these two kind of can do a lot of work against a Conant's team uh, on the opposing side or on a Conant's side I would say you know Azuro looks threatening surprisingly um, just because if it is uh, it's normal fairy type actually so if it you know it's stab play rough does a ton of damage to these three here and Aqua Jet uh, can do a lot of damage to Anorith. Of course, it does have to kind of weaken these two, but it does hit at like a decent speed stat, eh, 12. So um, we'll be able to outspeed some of the slower mons here, but it does need to kind of get these two chipped and has to, you know, deal with the fact that it is outsped 
by uh, these three dragons. But still, you know, it's going to be hard for Sergio to switch into that. So let's jump right into it. Let's see what actually happens in this LCRU match. Um, Sergio leads off with Gibble, and we're going to see Stuffle lead off. Okay, so Ice Punch from Stuffle, definitely scary to Gibble. Gibble probably going to want to get rocks up, but it does have to be kind of fear the Ice Punch, as that's exactly what we see. We do see this is South Rock turn one, which makes sense, right? For Sergio, I think his game plan is like with the double dragon is to just kind of overwhelm the opponent's team. So getting rocks up is valuable as it just kind of allows to break potential sashes. Not that sash is really expected here, but this kind of gets the chip necessary for these Pokemon to be able to, you know, get turn two at KOs into one at KOs, all those things. As Gibble's going to go down, get a little bit of chip with Rough Skin, and Akana's off to a pretty good start. Turn one, um, up ahead six and five. So we're going to see Clauncher come out. Um, Stuffle needs to be scared of, um, maybe needs to be scared of the water type move, might need to be scared of Aura Sphere, whatever it might be. And uh, Sergio, actually expecting that switch, actually reveals a flip turn, which I think is interesting as Akana brings in the Zigzagoon. I'm not sure if he brought it in as a sack um, to like maybe to Aura Sphere or maybe was predicting like a water type move and can, you know, get Berry Juice activated. But Zigzagoon comes in, does live, but Sergio does get a little bit of an advantage here in terms of momentum as Akana's going to take this as an opportunity here to just knock off this Meowth, I think working long term to getting an Aqua Jet sweep of some sort with the with the Azuril. So taking this as an opportunity to knock this uh, physic, you know, this Meowth, which is a steel type, getting a little bit of chip off as Sergio is going to be very comfortably able to go for a U-turn and knock out the Zig. So kind of even up to here, five and five, as Akonet has rocks on his side, but Sergio, uh, but does have the momentum in terms of like seeing what he can switch into as Anorith is going to come in and Stuffle is going to meet that thing. So again, Anorith, um, gonna go for the knock. Sergio um, trying to get rid of the Violite here, probably looking to weaken this for the dragons. As Stuffle can very comfortably just go for a low sweep. So, um, you know, getting the damage off and putting, making this probably slower potentially than Stuffle. As we're gonna see the Berry Juice come from Anorith, and again another low sweep, putting this uh, definitely um, in range of the next one. As we're gonna see a couple Rock Blasts come out. Fortunately for Akonet, only two Rock Blasts, meaning that he's gonna survive and be able to knock this thing out with a third low sweep. So things are looking pretty good for Akonet. Um, as Clauncher is gonna come back out again, Akonet is just gonna die to the Aura Sphere this time around. Nothing, unfortunately, on Sergio's team, you know, does have. <laughs> I guess it's a mono normal team. I didn't put that together until this game. So mono normal means Aura Sphere kind of goes crazy at this point. Um, I think um, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. So Aura Sphere looks really good as now the Azuril is going to come out. And Azuril does resist Aura Sphere. So it is fair. Potentially like a Scarf, I'm thinking, you know. Uh, there's definitely a potential for this thing to be like Scarfed or something. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, maybe I'll ask him later. But... At this point, Azuril can just come in and fire off a Body Slam, and you can see huge power means that this does a lot more damage, especially with this Meowth of Violite uh, knocked off, meaning that Azuril can just Aqua Jet right after um, picking up that kill. So, Bagon's going to come back out, it is going to go for Zen Headbutt, and fortunately Azuril is going to be, first of all, not flinched, it is, it is Berry Juice, meaning that he can just go for a second Body Slam and completely knock out the Bagon, which is crazy. I and when I watched this, I was like, that was insane. So either this, uh, this thing is in a Violite, um, or Azuril is just super strong. <laughs> I don't know, probably not a Violet is my guess. As Clauncher is gonna come in, Clauncher is gonna reveal Aura Sphere. It simply is just not enough as Body Slam is gonna bring that thing into range of Aqua Jet. And Azuril is on a little bit of a mini sweep here, which is really cool to see. So Azuril is gonna go for a little bit of chip, gets a little bit of damage off on the Dano, but at this point, um, actually Dano doesn't even kill, um, as we're gonna see that Dano is gonna kill with the second one. And at this point, Akane can very comfortably just go into Baneri, fire off a fake out, and uh, pretty much win the game. So Akana's actually gonna as well uh, win the game and we're gonna start off or finish off very strong in the regular season, which is great to see. So, you know, very happy that we can go to the playoffs. I'm pretty excited for that. Obviously there'll be one more video at the minimum and hopefully maybe two more if we can go to the finals, which would be great. Um, but yeah, I think I will leave it at that. I hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, I know I haven't uploaded one of this in a, in a while, so I'm happy to be able to record again on these tiers as I think they're super, super fun. 
I would definitely recommend you guys getting into them. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like. That would mean the world to me. Um, if you have any sort of questions, concerns, feedback, critiques on play, whatever it may be, feel free to leave a comment. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We are super, super close to 200 subscribers. And I would really appreciate it if you join me um, to getting to that goal. I'm really, really looking forward to that. So I'll leave it at that. I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care. Bye.